Hello. Today we have another interesting question. Reverse integer. This is one of the most popular interview question. You will see it everywhere. I believe like if you interview five different companies, you might get this question in one of them. This is really uh, very popular among the software engineer. And as you can see, right, this has been asked in Amazon, Google, Apple, and I, I can s tell you it's been asked in Bloomberg, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, uh, many big companies, right? They usually ask these questions to the candidate. Yeah. And as I mentioned, it's very important for you to not stress out where, while taking any interview. Always feel relaxed and read through the question. Look for the example and check, ask questions for any clarification. That's very important part because this is one of the expectations and interview look for those uh, those skills that if you don't understand any questions you are not hesitating to ask for the clarifications this is one of the best uh, best part in requirement gathering so yes always ask for any clarification if there is any doubt okay now let's look at the problems given a sign 32-bit integer x, return x with its digits reversed. If reversing x causes the value to go outside the signed 32-bit integer range, which is negative 231 to 231 minus 1, then return 0. Assume the environment does not allow you to store 64-bit integer, signed or unsigned. Okay. Now, the second part of this question is very important. Now, you have to pay the attentions to that. There is X integer is a signed 32-bit, okay, which is ranging from negative 231 to 231 minus 1, okay? Now, just for the sake of this range, right? I just wanted to show you what is the what is this number, right? So its value is negative two one four seven four eight three six four eight two two one four seven four eight three six forty seven. So this is the two important thing, right? This is the boundary. If you add negative one to this number, it will overflow. If you add plus one to this number, it will overflow. Okay, so this is very important, right? This, this, these things you should know that. And you have to handle these two boundaries in your exam. Okay, so how, look for the, uh, look at this input, right? So when some, when the x is equal to one, two, three, it should produce output as 3 to 1. And when there is an output, when there is an input of negative 1 to 3, your output should be negative 3 to 1. All right. And another one, this is important as well. If input is 120, output should be 21 because you are still doing it, right? The zero comes in front, it doesn't make any sense, right? So, yeah, I hope you understand, right? We need to reverse an integer, a 32-bit signed integer, okay? That should not overflow. If it's overflow, we just simply return zero, right? Now, how do we approach? We we understand that the input is an integer, 32-bit, right? And we have to construct a number in reverse order. 
right? So a number one, two, three has three digit, right? So basically, another thing is we are not going to use any data structure or any any inbuilt feature in the Java, right? It's just uh, we're gonna use the simple math to do this operation, okay? To write our algorithm, we will not use any data structure like a stack or anything, binary tree or anything. We are going to do it by simple math. Now, we have seen, right, this is an integer, and when you, when you divide the integer, right, it will reduce it if there is a reminder, right? It uh, it will give you the absolute value, right? Integer never deals with the negative, right? So one, two, three. If you divided it by ten, it will give you one, two, right? Similarly, if you divided one ten, it will give you one. Okay, it won't give you one point two because it's an integer. It doesn't hold the decimal values. Similarly, there is another operation in program in computer to find the remainder, okay? So one, two, three, if I am say I need to find the remainder, then I would say, okay, mod by 10, that will give me three. <laughs> <coughs> right, so this is, this is something you need to remember when doing this one. The most important part is we have to make sure that we never overflow the number. So we have to, we should remember the boundaries and handle those edge cases, right? Now, when this number is gonna overflow, as we see these two numbers, like this is the minimum and maximum, let's copy this and put it in this editor here. Right, so we see that, right? Now, if you divide this number by 10, right, it will give you this. Similarly, if you divided this number by 10, it will give you this, okay? Obviously, right, and how we're gonna construct the numbers, right? We usually construct by shifting the digit, right? So, for example, we get the three, and the next one is two, right? So, we should move this three to the tenth place and add the one, and we keep doing it, right? So, our equations for constructing the new number should be like this, the digit multiplied by 10 plus whatever the digit we got, right, the remainder, okay? That will give us the number. And this, this has to, this should not overflow, right? So for example, if we have to find the boundary when this temp value get overflow. So when it's gonna overflow, it's only gonna overflow when this number, this, uh, this digit, okay? And this one multiplied by 10 actually is gonna be greater than integer max value integer as max value, okay, which is this one, all right. So what we can say, we can say, okay, digit, if digit is greater than integer, by the way, it's absolutely fine uh, to do these kind of work while taking the interview, you are allowed to do that. There is no harm in this because you are just refining the requirement, right? It's a part of the coding exercise. So 
free to do that, right? Any assumptions, you can write it and you can talk to the interviewer. It's absolutely fine. So we do find out that if digit is greater than this value, which is nothing but this, right? Which is nothing but this one, okay? So it will guarantee overflow if it's greater than this one. And let's say what happened if it's equal to this one. So I would say if it's equal to this, in this case, what happened? Now see how we are constructing the number. The formula is this one. So in that case, right, if we are multiplying it by 10, it will give us 640 and the remainder, right? So remainder should be that if we add this, multiply by 10, so basically here another example equations for you to understand is multiplying by 10 plus remainder. So remainder is any number like one, two, three, four, right? Now remainder, I will say rem, it should not, should be If it's greater than this number, then it will guaranteed overflow. So you can calculate the remainder. If remainder, that means the remainder should not be, if it's greater than seven, that will make it overflow. Okay? That's interesting, right? <laughs> Similarly, the same logic applied to the negative values as well. Now negative is this one. We're gonna do the same thing here, right? And if you see this one, now this is the last digit, right? So here we see the last digit is eight and uh, the last digit is seven here and the last digit is eight here, right? So if we add minus eight to this negative number, that will overflow, okay? So remainder should be these two numbers. When we add negative number into the minimum value, it will overflow. When we add plus seven to the maximum value, it will overflow. So we do find out this is the boundary, okay? So we did refine the requirement here. I hope you understand, right? If not, like just, uh, we will uh, figure, we will see this, okay? If you don't understand, just uh, hang, in, hang in there, okay? So this is, uh, we do the refinement of our requirement here that we do find out when this, when our uh, numbers, right, this method can get overflow and when we need to return the zero. All right, so let's begin our algorithm for this one. Now, one thing I would say, like, since we are dealing with both number, positive and negative, right? I would say we're gonna, we gonna hold out the sign, right? The sign into a, a simple one digit that will call sign. I will say it's a sign and uh, I will say, okay, this is a sign. And I would say it's uh, one positive. And if my number, if your num, if the numbers you are providing me is less than zero, then I would change my sign to minus one. That's one thing. Okay. Do and uh, I will tell you why I'm doing this. Okay. This is important because we are, we don't want to do uh, the negative manipulation right when we reverse the number so I just hold the sign values into an integer value as a minus one and once I reverse it the numbers once I reverse the number we can just simply multiply it with the sign and it will give me the desired result all right now since I already hold the sign what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take the absolute value of x, that I will call it absolute x. I'm gonna use the math API to give me the absolute value of this x. All right, 
No, I hope you you're getting that right. So this is simple thing. We are just uh, getting the absolute value, and also I need to define a number which we gonna construct, and it's a zero as of now. All right. Now let's begin the logic. How are we gonna do that? So we gonna pop the digit from the back just like this right using this operations right how this is how we're gonna do that and we're gonna keep doing it until we get zero so while my absolute x is not equal to zero I'm gonna keep doing this operation what I'm gonna doing here so I would say I'm gonna find the remainder of this number. Hot. How are we gonna find the remainder? That's just like mod of 10. That gives me three in my first input. One, two, three, if I'm taking example. Okay, that gives me this. Now, whatever the remainder, okay, I have to make sure here, right here, now this remainder, it could be seven, it could be minus eight, or it could be any, it could be anything, right? Now, how are we gonna do that? How are we gonna do that? So we have to make sure that the number, okay, the number, whatever the numbers we are getting in, that number is. <coughs> This is the number we are constructing, right? And if we multiply it with the sign, okay? And if it's greater than integer dot max value, or if it's greater than max value, definitely we're gonna overthrow. But we also need to find the edge boundaries where this number multiplied by this sign so that we will get the number we're talking about and is equal to okay if it's max and if it's equal to integer dot max value okay and and remainder the remainder value Remember this line number 12, the remainder sh greater than 7, that means it will guarantee the overflow. In this case, what we're going to return, we say, okay, return 0. So that's one boundary we have covered. Now the second one. <coughs> the second is, if this number, okay, if number multiply by sign is less than the integer okay I'm I just messed up the spelling I'm sorry about that like I'm just using this uh, this editor without the intelligence so that it will give the real experience of the interview right interview you don't get intelligence so you should be able to practice it without intelligence. That's important as well. Now nums the in multiply by sign is equal to integer. Now this is if it's less than many value, definitely we are going to overflow. But if it's equal to the minimum min values underscore value and the remainder is greater than 8 because 8 is because we are only dealing with the absolute value that's why I'm calling it 8 we here we have a minus 8 right so if it's 8 then yes it will it will overflow okay 
So what we're gonna say, we can still say it will also return zero. That's it. So this is the two condition. This will say we cover this case, right? If it goes outside the boundaries, we're gonna return zero. We are not going to hold it back. And so we got the remainder here. We also need to construct this number. Okay, so how are we gonna construct it? We have the formula right here to construct the number. So number equal to number multiply by 10 plus remainder, this remainder. Okay, now this is the one thing we done. We got this number and now we are we just take out this three here so we got the first digit we construct the first digit we also so we have to move over move this number to here right so the next operation we have to make sure that this avsx is divided by 10 okay so avsx equal to this one right or simply you can say this is the shortcut okay so that's also gonna work so that's gonna reduce it by 10 now we're gonna continue this operation until we reach to the zero okay so when you divided 1 by 10 it will give you zero that's it so we by doing this all through the way we construct the number as a reverse and now since we constructed what we're gonna return we're gonna return the number that's it now we also need to multiply it with a sign so that for covering the negative cases right let's look again we got the x we store the sign values right as a one and if x is less than one the sign is minus one and we are then we then get the absolute value of x by removing its sign using the math api and then using the while loop we are finding the remainder here we find the boundary for the overflow for the max value and then for the min value and then we construct the number using by moving the numbers the previous numbers by tenth and adding the remainder to that number so at the same and also we have uh, dividing it by 10 so that we are moving that we're getting the quotient of that number by reducing the one because it's an integer and it doesn't hold the decimal value so when you divide it 1 2 3 by 10 it will give you 12 so the new number will be 12 you're gonna divide it again by 10 so that will give you one and then another one time so we will continue this operation until we reach to the zero so that's it so that will do the number reverse let's run it and see where how we're gonna go okay so we have a compilation error it's saying the nums is missing okay so i just say this num which is not here sorry about that and you can see this is passing the cases right amazing all right guys thank you so much for watching this and we will touch base again tomorrow by then thank you so much